Hi everybody, welcome to the Saturday Surface Interval in association with Empora. So I've been diving for a little while now and a lot of new and old scuba divers uh, look to me for advice. And what I want them to do is to avoid the mistakes that I've made to make them better scuba divers. Try and save them some money as well and maybe skip over some of the potential pitfalls that I've seen and might have even fallen into. Hindsight is a wonderful thing and I wish I had this sort of video to watch where back when I was first learning to dive, I mean the information was probably out there to be honest and I, I read all sorts of dive magazines and stuff but I still could never have known some of the things that I know now. Anyway, if this helps at least one of you out there I will be happy. Let's look at five of my scuba diving regrets. <laughs> My first regret is mainly about the diving equipment that I invested in and, you know, probably shouldn't have. Now, I've had my fair share of diving equipment and have learned a lot uh, just from experience that not all of it is good to be honest. Um, now I can find the good in everything and I know that not all dive gear is made for every single diver, but I have learned that the hard way. Some divers dive with certain gear that I just wouldn't dream of diving with, but hey, if it works for them, then great. It just, it doesn't work for me and there's nothing wrong with that. The worst place for a scuba diver to work though is at a dive center because you are constantly surrounded by the newest and shiniest dive gear where the impulse by reflex just keeps triggering and you just end up with another piece of kit. If I could go back in time and talk with a younger version of myself, other than you know lottery numbers and all that kind of stuff, I talk about the type of diver that I am right now and the gear that I find the most useful and what's more of a fad that mm, don't bother investing in that. Now I have my fair share of rusty dive knives that just rust after a couple of dives and gear that I just plain don't use anymore. Uh, I understand it's really hard to know what you're going to know in 10 years time, but when I think back to like the BCD that I thought was the best thing out there when I started to dive, I kind of cringe. So it would be nice just to, when you're buying equipment, just think a little bit ahead. Just think what type of scuba diver you're going to be and what piece of equipment you're going to need and want in a few years time and then go back and look at that thing again and say, oh, do I need to buy this? Mm. Charging up your dive torch or changing the battery in your camera is really important between dives. So many times I've been on a dive, I've used my torch or my camera, at the end of the dive you wash your gear down and you check in the batteries and the battery says it's fine. Okay, getting ready for the next dive, the battery's fine, you check it, you jump in the water and all of a sudden it's dead as a doornail. Batteries are tricky things. The first quarter of a battery, that first 25% just seems to last forever. But then anything below half a battery just disappears in a flash. Cold water diving is specifically, more, especially worse for this. Batteries like it when it's nice and warm because it's a chemical reaction. So when you grab your gear out of your kit bag, out the back of your car and check the battery, it can be perfectly fine because it's been in a nice warm car or something. But then you plunge it into some really cold water, it's gonna affect the battery. This actually happened to my dive computer a while back. I checked the battery on the surface, getting kitted up, everything was fine, making sure everything's set up, jumped in the water and the poor thing goes crazy about a low battery and it dialed the, uh, the contrast really low on my dive computer. I could still read it, but it, it wasn't easy to read. So after every dive, if you get a chance to recharge or swap batteries out, then do it, it's worth it. Just because an item only uses 20% of the battery on the first hour long dive of the day doesn't mean that it will last for the second hour long dive. So if you get a chance to, swap the batteries or at least top them up. <laughs> 
Today's sponsor is Empora. Empora is an online magazine that is all about inspiring adventure and getting outside. Whether your outdoor adventure takes you sliding around on a snowy mountain or pulling yourself up on a rock climbing wall or over a boulder, riding your bike through wooded trails, surfing barrels down at the beach, and yes, of course, exploring the underwater world on scuba or snorkeling, Empora is a website that has got you covered. Empora features all sorts of interviews with industry leading professionals professionals and brands, previews of upcoming events, reviews of the latest gear, the latest news, and everything that you need to keep yourself clued up. Empora has got the lot, so check them out after this. When you're topping up the battery on your camera, the same goes for footage and memory cards and log data on your dive computer. So if you're shooting a lot of footage in high definition, your memory card is going to fill up really quickly. So between dives, download the pictures and video onto a laptop or an external hard drive so that you can format the memory card so it's fresh for when you dive in for the second dive. I've been on many dives with a camera, seen something amazing, you point it, you push the shutter button and then mm, uh, the memory's full. It's always worth emptying that SD card when you get the chance. The same goes for your dive computer and your logbook. Fill out your logbook, the paper logbook, as soon as you can after your dive because you will forget things and your dive computer will forget things as well. Dive computers, they all have a limited amount of memory and when that fills up, it just overwrites the oldest dive. <clears throat> Most computers have a fair amount of memory now, but if your plan is to log your dives all at the end of your trip after 20 or something dives, you might lose some data. It's also a good idea to write down the dive site during the dive briefing. Too many times I'll get back to dry land to log my dives after three or four dives only. Uh, where were we on dive one? Or if you skip the entire day just because you're a bit lazy, a couple days later, uh, where were we? you will forget things, so log things as soon as you can. When you first learn to dive, and I've covered this a bunch of times, we often give you a little more lead than you actually need. There's multiple reasons for it, none of them are nefarious, I promise, we're not trying to sink you down to Davy Jones, but when you're first starting out on your own, you might feel like that amount of lead that you've been given on your training course is gospel and what you need for all future dives. Only, it's actually best to do a fresh weight check after your first few dives, after at least like 10 dives, it's best to do another weight check because the amount of lead that you actually need will probably go down as you become a better diver. Reducing the amount of lead is far better for you for a whole range of reasons, but there's always the voice in the back of my mind when I'm loading up my weight belt of, oh, is that gonna be enough lead? Oh, I'm not really sure. Maybe I should put, you know, a little bit extra because I know exactly how much lead I'm gonna need. I've gone through my logbook and I've worked it out, but oh, what if I'm wrong? Maybe I should put a little extra in and then by the time you jump in, you, you empty your BCD and oh, of course I'm wearing too much lead, I need to take more off. So if you dump gas out of your BCD on the surface and you woof, plunge straight down to the bottom, you've got too much lead. So instead of doing that, just tell your buddy beforehand, okay, I'm gonna do a weight check so that they can help. And that way, if you do have too much lead, you've got more pairs of hands around you so you can take some lead off and then put it back on dry land. It's always worth doing a weight check after at least 10 or 20 dives because one of the main reasons that we put a little too much lead uh, sort of on you is when you're first starting out, you naturally hold a bit more air inside of your lungs so you need that little extra lead to actually get down. By the time you relax into your diving, you're not actually holding as much air in your lungs, so you don't need as much lead. There's all sorts of other reasons, but it's worth doing another weight check. Now I started diving and I did my first two diving courses back to back straight after one another. After that, 
I just, I fell in love with diving and I continued up the training ladder and I eventually started working at a dive center because I just enjoyed diving. And then of course I went down the professional route, but most of my diving was always with students or as a student. It was actually quite rare that I dived just for fun. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong, I enjoyed teaching, I loved it, and spending any time in the water was just amazing, but it was kind of rare that I was in the water and not looking out for somebody or like learning something. If you want to go down the professional route, then definitely do it. But do remember to take some time for yourself and go diving to just enjoy it again without having to plan the dive for all the other divers and constantly thinking if they're okay. And if you are a professional, try to work out a system that ensures that you do go diving just for yourself every so often. Taking part in training courses is great to sharpen your skills and get new skills, but actually diving is far better to hone those skills, I promise you that. Diving in a controlled environment where everything goes to plan is all great, I suppose, but you're gonna learn a lot more on fun dives where not everything goes to plan, so those are the dives where you're actually learning stuff. So, scuba diving regrets. What have you ever come across or done while scuba diving and immediately or just later regret? I mean, did you buy all of the right equipment the very first time and choose the right training agency off the bat? Let's discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.